Hello everyone, my name is Dailash Lagat and I am very glad to be here today to teach you about what social enterprises are and also to share my experience as well as share the experiences of some organizations that are working in social entrepreneurship. I am a conservationist by training, an environmental conservationist and by practice I'm a researcher a writer and now I'm also a co-founder of Evermore Africa which is an environmental based social enterprise. So I work in different capacities right now. I am a co-founder of Evermore Africa. I'm also a project manager with an organization an organization called Conservation, where I help teach kids on uh, on build on environmental concepts such as climate change and where we're trying to build capacity for future farmers in Nyamira County. And I also work as a copywriter in an advertising farm. So today, our main goal is to learn about social entrepreneurship and first of all i'd like to introduce the social enterprise of which i'm a co-founder of it's called evermore africa as you can see and our tagline is we are for the love of the environment our mission is what, what we want to do is to contribute to building a society that is responsible for the natural environment uh, because we live together and we're supposed to be able to manage our success sustainably and how we do this is we create environmental awareness. We work with communities uh, to help them utilize their resources. We also come up with innovation uh, that solve environmental issues for for the country, for the world, and for businesses. And also now we also do mentorship as part of our go different areas, natural resource management, environmental and capacity building, sustainable businesses, advocacy. And as you can see here, this is some of the community members we work with in Kisumu. Uh, they have embraced us as part of their community and we help them to increase tree cover. We have an education program that's set up in their schools and we work together. Currently, we have a number of programs. We have community engagement, where as I had mentioned earlier, for instance, we work with communities in Kisumu. So we engage them in conservation practices. And we, the main thing is to help them do it themselves, like become owners of their projects. And then we have a program called Conservation Conversations, which now reaches out to the general public, especially through social media. And here we create awareness on key conservation issues in Kenya, in Africa and the world. So if you want to learn more about that, kindly check out our Facebook page. And lastly, we have environmental education, where we are working with kids between the age of 7 to 18. And we also teach them about environmental issues in their community and what role they're, going, they're playing in ensuring that there's a balance in the world, especially in our relationship with nature. So here are um, some of our, co our, of our co-founders. One is called Maureen Evans and myself, Dailash. And these are our details in case you'd like to contact us. Moving on to the matter at hand and why we are here today. The first thing, the first slide is talking about social entrepreneurship and if it is a more sustainable approach to environmental organ organizations and how we work. So that's a question which um, has been on, my, on our mind for a very long time because when we started Evermore Africa, the three of us, we used to work a lot together in a committee in university trying to champion uh, projects and creating awareness in our university and after that we all went into very different fields uh, some of us working in research others went into sales others went into governance and the one thing that we all had in common was that we still wanted to contribute to 
building an environment and still wanted to contribute to making uh ensuring sustainability on earth so we started asking ourselves so uh should we set up an ngo what should we do could you set up a project and then we came across this term called social entrepreneurship and we decided because one of the if we can see so uh today what we're gonna learn before i get into the details this is just what is part of this uh presentation what uh, social entrepreneurship is which models there are how social entrepre enterprises are funded and from personal experiences the wins and challenges in running social enterprises that's from a personal point of view and then we'll have some examples where we're going to go through around the world and this is i this is not limited to um to only environmental organizations but also to different types of organizations around the world and lastly we're going to look at some useful links and resources that are going to support your journey so moving on to the next slide so as a social entrepreneur or just any person who wants to make an impact in this world, you usually ask yourself so many questions. You're like, I want to make a change, but I also want to make a living. Um, we have this project that is running, but funding is running out. You're wondering, so is it possible for us to run like a normal business and make some money as an NGO? And if we want to do all these things, how, where are we going to get support? Where are we going to get training? How are we actually going to do this? So these are questions we ask ourselves and we, we we asked ourselves before we decided to be a social enterprise and we're still figuring it out. So the first thing that uh, we came to learn and what I'd like to teach today is what is social entrepreneurship. Usually you, you, you're in a you, when you're in that dilemma, you're like either you're going to work with people or you're going to make a profit. And sometimes the planet all suffers. A lot of times the planet suffers. But now, if you're running a business that seeks to address issues, societal, environmental, while well, trying at the same time to be financial savvy, like you make money that are going, that's going to support your project, you call yourself a social entrepreneur. And that's what social entrepreneurship is based on. You're not necessarily only doing impact and you're not necessarily on, only doing profit. But when they come together, where you're generating some part of, of, of funding by doing business and you generate that money and direct it into your projects. You, you're basically called a social enterprise or as yourself, you're called a social entrepreneur. So how does a social enterprise operate? Yeah, what in, in a sense, like, what are the models that are out there? What are the approaches that are out there when it comes to social entrepreneurship? The first thing I noticed when I was researching on social enterprises and social entrepreneurship is that one size does not fit all, meaning an approach used by one organization may not work for another organization. So there are different approaches. And we look into this further by using this graph, this model. It says there are different. Let's say this is this is the scale of social enterpri ent enterprises and social entrepreneurs. You'll find different types of companies depending on where it is on the scale. On the extreme left, you have 100% donor-funded NGOs, and in this case, this means that they don't have any sort of income-generating activity, and all they require on a, they they all. All the only way they run their projects is by getting funds from donors. Then you have uh, an entrepreneurial non nonprofit, meaning it is a nonprofit, uh, but it still can generate some income. Also, uh, also in the same line is a non nonprofit, which, um, as you can see, this this scale is divided into two. So there are nonprofits registered as a nonprofit, and then there's a for profit where these are companies that are able to make money and are registered as for profit organizations maybe for instance as a limit um, as a limited company but their work is also involves impact making activities so there you get a non non profit where all the money that they are making goes straight into their impact programs 
we have a socially responsible business where for instance uh, let's say a company like microsoft they have software that they are selling but they also have very big programs that support um impact making programs so you find like part of their money and all their earnings go into impact making activities we have a give one get one and donate portion of your proceeds there you're donating portion of your money to uh, another organization that's only doing impact making then we have a conscious company or brand or lifestyle that means that all their products are, are conscious maybe like all their products are environmentally friendly they only work in sustainable ways for instant organic farming or maybe they are only making like vegan leather or or such examples like all their products are conscious of the environment or are conscious conscious of the community that they are working with so these are just some but um when you click on this presentation at the bottom of this presentation is a link that will take you to a page that explains this further so now as you had been looking at different types of social enterprises on that scale we're going to look at examples of social enterprises that people who are actually working in social entrepreneurship and to start is our our company and here what uh, what when we embrace this idea we said brainstorming on how we're going to be able to generate money um so that we'll be able to continue running our projects because we hadn't started we had been applying for funding mechanisms but we, we were not were not yet um securing funding but at the same time we want to ensure that the projects that we've started are running so what we do we provide environmentally friendly products and services to businesses and individuals and then the profits are, chan are channeled into our impact making programs and also channeled into paying our staff and paying our volunteers and when we have maintenance that needs to be done on things we channel our money there so you can go to our website and learn on every uh, company that's explained here you can just click on this word here and it will take you to their website next is tony wild um who is one of the mo one admirable organization that works in kenya and their mission is to promote conservation by creating awareness on wildlife conservation through photography film and science so for tony wild you'll find like their model is um that they are able to like for instance they take photographs of animals and they sell prints and they take the money and they have impact making programs like education for children in in primary and high school so you find that they all this money that they generate through selling maybe their hoodies selling prints teaching and training photography they channel their money back into the impact making uh, programs Another one, which is a very amongst the unique cases that I'm going to talk about today, is the Northern Rangelands Trust. This is an NGO that also generates money in Kenya. They they usually do conservation in the Northern Rangelands in Kenya, but they have pro, they have ecologists in all their conservancies, and also they train women to have local like craft so that they can sell them to earn a livelihood this one i'd like to make a note that for an ngo as big as let's northern rangeland trust or some examples like bad life international wwf uh, or any ngo if they decide to pick up the social enterprise model they have to register a company differently under a different name but as a limited by liability company or as a for profit organization company this is because for instance in kenya there's a lot of restrictions in terms of how um an ngo can work an ngo cannot generate income but a for profit company can and if you register a for profit company and you're an ngo that can be your your way of making money and then you then you transfer the money from your for profit and into your work another uh, enterprise is bentos fuel they sell 
uh, charcoal briquettes here. These guys are now like conscious producers because they produce charcoal briquettes from waste. So La Kioska are also a very uh, huge company. They have uh, mini kiosks e- across their project areas where people are able to use uh, solar mini grids, like really small solar powered kiosks where people in like rural communities are able to come and charge their phones or there's like a refrigerator running or things like that so they have uh their commercial like the way they generate money is through setting up uh solar panels in big places or for companies and then their impact making model is now in communities and also these people in communities are able to pay a very little amount to use uh, the solar the solar kiosks one of the most famous ones that I've had the privilege to work with is fair trade international these guys sell agricultural products at a premium rate meaning that they take products from farmers and then they add a premium they add an extra amount of money uh, to when it's going into the market and this extra amount of money like the profit is generated back into this community of farmers so you find that farmers always earn if you're a fair trade farmer you always earn good amount of money and then the premiums the extra come when the extra money comes it benefits your community maybe you you get hospitals built or schools or toilets or things like that yeah so that is also a social enterprise. And one who um, is, it, it was fa- founded by a friend of mine who also really inspired our, who also inspires our journey. It's called Farm to Fork and it's in Philippines. This organization works with local farmers uh, who pr- practice non- in non-GMO agriculture, organic farming. And then they have products, like for instance, they, maybe they have uh, turmeric as a product it's a, it's a conscious company product wise so maybe they sell um, turmeric to 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 markets and then these this money is channeled back into their farmers and another one is amani institute and it it runs training programs before building capacity of leaders and social entrepreneurs around the world and if you want to learn about all these organizations that I've talked about, all these companies, you can just click on each slide. There's a link. So you can just click on them and they'll take you to their pages. So let's talk about money. Uh, probably wondering where social enterprises get their money from. The first the first time I started working in, uh, in the NGO world and started interacting with the NGO world is is I, I started becoming really sad or worried about how impact programs they just like run out of money and then projects stop like they are making an impact in the community but then because they don't their funding has run out it's it has to stop so I had the privilege of working with bad life uh, which works in so many countries around the world and I was working in a program called the Local Engagement and, and Empowerment Program. Here, we managed to teach about this. Uh, we, we used to work with, with partner countries in Africa. And all of them were wondering how are they going to be able to generate money to at least not only not just like support the whole project, but at least even part of it. So we came up with these two uh, approaches of funding, restricted funding and unrestricted funding. And you'd find that almost all social enterprises around the world have this, these two as a model. They have res- a restricted funding source and an unrestricted funding source. So let's look at what restricted funding is. Restricted funding is, some, is a funding source that has been, re- has been sourced for a particular project or reason and has to be used in a stipulated way, especially since a lot of restricted funding comes from donors and grants or scholarships. Those are such some examples. 
you have to use that money as stipulated in your application you can't channel some of that money into uh maybe maybe let's say you have a broken computer in your office and you need some money to fix it you can't take money from the donor or grant to fix that computer you'll have to wait until maybe you get another time to do uh, an application or you get and unrest- uh, you get restricted funds from someone but now there's also this uh, term called unrestricted funding um and this are funding sources that has been generated by an organization or a company and this money can be used to as how the enterprise deems fit for instance if you have a project that needs extra money to be pumped into you can you can work as a team and the finance team talks about how they can channel some of that money into another project and examples of these are how of unrestricted funding sources are profits from sales of products and services maybe you're selling something like a conscious uh, a conscious uh, product or maybe you have a consultancy opportunity as a company maybe you're coming up with a strategy for wind power or you're coming up for with a strategy for gas uh, or for renewable energy if your team is able to do a consultancy for someone that money that comes in is an unrestricted funding source you can also have investments from partners or your team uh, for instance for us a lot of our money at the moment as we continue to look at uh, other income generating activities comes from partners in our work what we channel we contribute a certain amount of money continuously to ensure that our projects are running as we also contribute to setting up and running impact uh, money generating activities and then you can also have donations from individuals uh, where maybe your friends or you have a page for donate and you can get that as as a fu- an unrestricted funding source one when you are doing this training <clears throat> some of the examples maybe i can throw around that people could use are for unrestricted funding sources for instance including things like uh developing uh doing consultancy for people developing an online store where you can put products we can have tours and travels especially in things like ecotourism and stuff you can have tours and charge people for it to experience nature but in a more sustainable way so maybe partner with another organization like the north northern ridge drench trust they would also benefit from it and you <clears throat> you as a team would also benefit some money that will help you run your projects and amongst others which you can read about so um when it comes to social entrepreneur ent- entrepreneurship so far as a team and just by talking to some other social entrepreneurs i came up with these two sides of the story so there's the yay which is the positive and the nay which is the kind of difficult things that we need to work on and we are working through so let's start with the positive we being a social entrepreneur is really good because you feel like you're contributing positively to the world and the environment and you're able to help like conserve environment you're able to see change in community you're able to work with people you're able to execute an idea and you see it working in real life and that builds a lot on your self esteem your confidence and just as a team you're able to create employment opportunities like for instance for us just something simple like getting someone to build your website something simple like getting someone to come and help us build our website or pay volunteers who are going to uh, do training things like that are positive things that uh you get as a social entrepreneur you end up learning a lot of new skills because for you to run a company you have to be in the mindset where you are always learning you'll 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 be, you'll be challenged to do things you had never thought you'd do you might be thinking that you you're more talented in managing a project but you'll find out that you're actually really good at building a website you're good in social media so you learn a lot of new skills you end up collaborating with like-minded people 
and also just like something like this like sharing an ex- your experience with people and helping them growing their business and ideas just being able to just share share your experience with other people hoping that it will benefit them positively that's also a really good thing and also just being in a team and watching each other grow and watching your company grow then there's the name which is like a bit sad but <laughs> it's necessary uh, challenges are always necessary one of the things that we've faced as a company and i know a lot of people have is that there are, for instance in kenya there's no clear definition on what a social enterprise is you can decide to go and and register your company but you have to pick a side you have to pick you want to do impact making businesses you want you, you impact making activities so you'll be asked are you guys are an ngo and you think about the the not really repercussions but how an ngo works for instance you're not um in an ngo you can't really say that this is my company it's more like it is a community company and if you have if you're founders of an ngo it's very it's very easy for you to lose that title if any anyone can can say that this is my company and you won't have any like you can't argue with that because that's what is in the constitution but for instance a social enterprise in Kenya it's not defined even when you go to a bank and you decide to set up an account for your company they ask you so are you an ngo because we, we are seeing you're doing ngo activities but you're also wanting to generate money so yeah that n- a clear definition is a challenge you faced then there's always the time lag between an idea and execution maybe you guys have come up with an idea it takes some time to execute but the time sometimes you find is very necessary for the idea to grow we have influence from from external factors for instance like now the situation where everyone in the world is facing uh covid is here and um we there are projects of us that have stalled uh, we can't teach kids because we're like ooh, yeah it's just exposing children to a lot of danger and also just generally the world is on is at a standstill which i'm guessing every other company in the world is facing that sometimes you have collaborations they don't fall through and one of the most for us one of the most the biggest issues at the moment is also limited access to funding and financial resources as much as we do contributions as a team we also continuously apply for grants and being a social enterprise does not discount you from doing that from applying for support because they support they still there are a lot of funding mechanisms out there that support private companies so we are still continuing to apply for financial funding and on a personal basis we need uh we are trying to work on our work life balance trying to see how we can balance our work and our life and lastly f- also finding a very healthy balance between your impact making activities and your enterprise like the money generating activity so trying to balance not only focus too much on one side or too much on the other but just finding a healthy balance from experience at the moment we are also having like a little bit of an issue there cuz we are in a space where we have 3 to 4 impact making ideas that are running and are already like the project execution stage and you know impact make in our enterprise making they are our ideas and our projects are more like in this let's say one is already running but others are still in the ideation and prototyping stage so just finding that balance is what we are learning as we're going along as social entrepreneurs. So the last slide um this was going to be a quite a short training and the last slide is now you who's listened to this um presentation who's learned about what a social enterprise is who's looked at the different types of social enterprises and now you're ready you're ready to now go into m- more research and seeing if this is a viable option for you 
you're asking yourself, so now what? Where do I go from here? And I put up some of some resources that I have used and that I am using, and also as we are using as a team right now. Um, learning just learning about what different social enterprises is. You take you can take a free course. There are so many free courses. You can also learn about the different types of social enterprises by taking another course. And you can enroll on platforms for business, uh, for founders and business teams. So for instance, this VC4A, they give you tools from the basic of, I want to start a company, I want to start a business, I want to start a social enterprise, to who would you want to be your co-founder, to how am I going to prototype? They lead you the whole way and... The beauty is that right now there are so many free resources in the world. Um, the only person who'd hold yourself, who hold you back is yourself, honestly. And there are some places where you can apply for funding and training, like NetFund in Kenya for environmental organizations, the Shiva's Ventures on Social Entrepreneurship. That's an international competition where you can learn, where you can apply, you, you pitch your idea and they give you funding. It's a competitive process, but it's also a learning process. Uh, KCIC is uh, an incubator where it incubates your business. And some books that I would recommend, for instance, uh, Lean Startup. It shows you uh, just the prototyping process. Ruthless to Win talks about business working from your heart and not only for for gain and here it's actually by a person who 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 stopped working too much in just like winning and getting money and and started working from his heart so you can read his story and this last one is a report by the british council about the state of social entrepreneurship in kenya as of the year 20 i think between 2016 and 2018 so that would be a very wonderful resource so we come to the last slide, almost the end of this presentation. And we ask ourselves what we've learned today. So from the first slide, what, so, what is a social entrepreneurship? We've learned about the different models and approaches to social entrepreneurship. We've learned about the examples. This came first, examples of social enterprises, where you can go check out all the social enterprises. We have learned about the funding. Where do social enterprises get money from? your wins and challenges when there's things to look forward to and also things some things to expect when you so, when you when you want to run a social enterprise so this came from our story and our story, stories of different social entrepreneurs that i know and lastly you have received links uh, to just kickstart you on your journey as a social entrepreneur and as you, as we hopefully continue making a positive influence in this world and i cut that is the end of my presentation thank you very much